Hi, hello, how's it going? It's Elena, and I'm back at it again with another finance video. These videos have honestly been some of my favorite to create this year as I go on my own financial journey. Learning a lot more about finances this year has been incredibly empowering to me and hopefully will be useful to you as well. Today, we're gonna be talking all about budgeting. An incredibly important tool for getting your finances in order. Even if you're just making barely minimum wage or you're making a ton of money each year, budgeting can be so useful to understand where your money's going because every dollar has a job. I'm also by no means the person who's gonna say that you have to like penny pinch every dollar. I'm all about enjoying your money. You only live once. We're only young ones, enjoying the present, but I'm also passionate about being financially independent and feeling financially secure for the future. I don't know if you've seen that interview by Cher where she's like, so I think someone asks her basically like, oh, are you gonna marry a rich man? She's like, honey, I'm the rich man. And that is me this year. I'm like, I'm gonna build my own financial future. I wanna understand my money. I wanna know how it works. I wanna know where it's going. And I wanna be able to take care of myself long into the future. I feel like spending money has never been easier, aka budgeting is more important than ever. With the ease of our cell phones, you can literally just pull up anything you could ever want and like it's one click away, especially when your card information is saved to your phone. So budgeting at first, it can feel intimidating. It can feel a bit scary, but I promise you it's honestly pretty fun once you start to get the hang of it. I kind of look forward to doing my like end of the month budgeting and like going through my finances. So throughout this video, I'm gonna be talking all about budgeting. I'm gonna be talking about the best apps and tools. I'm gonna be showing you guys my own budget and I'm literally gonna do my budgeting for the month and show you guys step-by-step step how I do it and really bring you along for the journey. So if you wanna learn all things budgeting, just keep watching. So just a few things to keep in mind. This is gonna look so different for everybody depending on your job, if you're just supporting yourself, if you're supporting other people, if you live in a city, if you don't live in a city, if you're a student, if you're working full time, like it's gonna look really different. And it depends on what your priorities are as well. So take that in consideration, especially when you look at my own budget. It's very personal, so take some of this advice, sit with it, think it through for yourself, figure out what works for you and your lifestyle and your own goals, and then move forward from there. So budgeting is basically all about the money coming in and the money leaving your bank account. So your income and your expenses, and you basically want more money left at the end of the month, so a budget surplus rather than a budget deficit in order to have a positive financial gain for the month. And when it comes to the style of budgeting you wanna do, you know, you can do it on your computer, you can do it on an app, you can do it on a piece of paper and have a little budgeting diary. So again, figure out what works for you. I'd recommend starting off with a goal. It doesn't have to be some massive goal of like, wanting to buy a house, but I think having a goal will really help you be more motivated to stay on top of your money and your expenses. Maybe you do want to save for something big, or maybe you just feel like at the end of the month, where the hell did my money go? You're stressed about paying rent, so you feel like you just can't get ahead and that you just keep slipping up with your money. Finding that little motivating factor really will help you stick to figuring out a budget for you and sticking to that budget and keeping it up month by month. If you're kind of wondering like where the hell do I even start, what I recommend doing is pulling up all your bank statements from about the last three months. I feel like that's like a helpful amount of time to kind of get a good idea of where your money's gone. It's gonna change month by month. So getting like three different months I think is really helpful to look through. So looking at your detailed bank statement for the first time is kind of scary. Like you don't really always know what's in there. There's gonna be some surprises. I would say just go into it with some grace. Be nice to yourself. Don't be too freaked out. We're gonna take it one step at a time. In my case, I kind of technically fall under like the freelancer side of things. So my income definitely varies every month. If your income is more stable because you have like more traditional nine to five, it's gonna be a bit easier for you, but make sure you're figuring out what your income is for each month as well as your expenses. But before we dive into income, let's first break down your expenses. So if you're just starting off budgeting, you really wanna go line by line on your bank statement and see where your money's going. For me, this is when something like Mint comes into play. I love Mint, I'll talk more about it later. But Mint basically does that categorizing work for you. So the 50, 30, 20 rule is like an age old budgeting system that basically helps you kind of categorize your expenses. There are different ways of doing this, but this is just kind of a good rule across the board. So it basically means 50% of your money should go to your needs, 30% goes to your wants, and 20% goes to savings. This is when it's important to understand the difference between necessary and unnecessary items for that 50%. What would fall in there is like rent, bills, you have to pay your car. In my case, it'd be like a subway card. It's not gonna be that sushi dinner night out 
that's not a necessity, it's gonna be the grocery bill. To kind of start off with building your budget, it's helpful to tally up those absolutely necessary items to see what number comes up and then take your income and subtract it from that. And what's left over is basically the money that's gonna then be divvied up to your more fun spending. So your wants as well as your saving goals, which can also include investing goals, paying off loans, debt, things like that. So then once you've kind of figured out by taking the average of each month for those different categories, you can figure out what that budgeting number looks like for you for those categories. When you total up your monthly expenses and your total income, ideally your income is higher than your expenses. That's where you get that budget surplus versus your budget deficit. We want that surplus. Sometimes the 50, 30, 20 rule is a little bit broad. There is one that I like from Dave Ramsey that I'll put up on the screen that I kind of loosely have used in the past. Instead of being 50, 30, 20, he like breaks it down a lot more. So he'll say 10% giving, which I like. I'm, I'm trying to incorporate that more. 10% saving, 25% housing, so your rent, 5 to 10% utilities, so think electricity, water bills, Wi-Fi, 10 to 15% food. So for you, kind of have to figure out, is that groceries? Is that eating out? What does that kind of add up to? 10% transportation, 10 to 25% insurance. Insurance is so expensive if you live in the US, it's so annoying. 5 to 10% personal spending, 5 to 10% health, 5 to 10% recreation or fun, entertainment, and then 5 to 10% miscellaneous. So I think that's a little bit more helpful because it doesn't always perfectly fit in the 50, 30, 20 rule. That's a little vague in my own opinion. So now I'm gonna go through my own actual budget and go through every expense with you guys. I'm not gonna show you everything I spend money on, but I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. It's become fun for me now. I've been doing it for years. I also just really enjoy like lists and spreadsheets and I like inputting numbers. So that's probably why it's fun for me. It may not be fun for you at all, but I don't I don't hate it. I don't hate it. So in my case, I have very differing income every month based off like brand deals and AdSense. If I do consulting work or something like that. So I have to kind of adjust it every month. Also in my case, I have been budgeting for many years now, so I don't feel feel the need to assign a very specific budget number and amount to different categories. If you're just starting off, it's probably gonna be helpful. And what I actually do is at the end of the month, I look at Mint and then I take that information, I actually input it into a separate like master spreadsheet of all the past months of spending. As I was saying earlier, Mint is incredible. It's super helpful. It's basically an online platform, a website where you input your banking information and it tracks and kind of categorizes all of your expenses for you. It is so helpful, but it's it's not absolutely perfect. Like sometimes it will like miscategorize things. It won't like show what my Venmo payments were for and stuff like that. So I like to take that information and kind of like carefully and closely go through it and then input everything into my spreadsheet. Hello from my computer. Yes, I have an additional keyboard because my keyboard's broken because I spilled water on it. I should put this on that. Nope. What we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna pull up my spreadsheet. I'm gonna show you guys as well as go through Mint and go through my expenses. Okay, welcome to my Google Excel spreadsheet. Sheet. Big fan of these. You can see here at the bottom, I've been doing it for many a month. I kind of have figured out a system at this point. So as you can see, I already have some things set up here, like my income section, and I'm gonna go through each category. So I have housing here, as you can see, y'all already know my rent if you've seen my other videos, and some other things, my insurance, my Wi-Fi, my phone bill, my exercise class that I love and spent too much money on. It's actually more than that, but that's okay. Shopping. For me, what fits in this section is anything like clothing, books, home decor, any item that's not like a necessity that type of stuff technology for me I personally have a separate category because I can business expense this like for my business so if I get a new camera if I need a new battery a memory card this section is more pertinent to me than somebody else bodega pharmacy living in New York City I like often will pop into like a bodega or a CVS and like grab a cliff bar and it will add up over the course of the month so I like having this section if you don't live in a city where you're like constantly just bopping into little bodegas it might not be right for you next up is transportation gas if I'm driving cars, Ubers and Lyfts, subway station, plane tickets, if I like need to spend extra to check a bag, it will all fall under transportation. Entertainment, RIP, this used to look like concerts and movie tickets and stuff like that, but these days there's not a lot in that section. Subscriptions is gonna be different from everybody. I already have mine inputted because these are the ones that I use monthly. Health and wellness, if there's any medication I need, or if I like get my like lashes done, or if I get like laser hair removal. Retirement, as you can see, I already have $500 inputted here because I put in 500 towards my Roth IRA every single month. And then what I invest into index funds kind of shifts each month. Grocery section, I keep it separate from 
from eating out. Drinks slash alcohol if I like buy wine to bring home or if I get a happy hour drink with a friend, coffee. Again, this employee section is more personal to me. I'll hire sometimes like a videographer. Right now I'm having someone help me build a website. I have an assistant as well, so that will fall under this section. Taxes, not fun. And then miscellaneous here is for things where I'm like, this doesn't really fit in any category, but I need to like know what it is. And then finally Venmo. I have a Venmo section because Mint will like show the Venmo, but it obviously won't say what the Venmo is. So I like to go through my Venmo at the end of the month and look like, did I pay a friend for food? Did she pay me for food? Like what was in there and input into here. And then here we have the total expenses. So I can take the sum of all these different expenses as well as the sum of my income and subtract them to see what I have spent over the course of the month. If you're wondering why there's a bunch of different lines under each category as opposed to just one line for one number, what I like doing for my personal budget is inputting every single expense. I know it can sound like a lot, but it actually doesn't take that long if you do it one month at a time. And this to me is super helpful instead of seeing like shopping $400 and I look back at it in three months, I'm like, dang, what did I spend $400 on? So like for the eating out section, I'll write down the restaurant I went to and how much I spent there so I can very much remember what that was, what the occasion was. Okay, got that shirt from Depop, bought those three books. So I know what is in that shopping category and it also will help me kind of figure out like where do I need to cut back? As you can see here, I go over to this budgets section for me and you can see the top here. It has all the different months to look back on, which is really lovely. So you can see the different categories they have here and on the right, it actually will say the numbers that are budgeted, but I'm just not gonna include that. I don't want it to be confusing to you because it's so unique to each individual what budget numbers you set. But here's some example of different categories that helps categorize for you. Right now, I'm on the month that we're currently in, so that's why a lot of these are empty here, but you can see it'll go green or red, show you how much you spent in certain areas. Clearly, I've already spent money on restaurants, but I haven't gone to grocery shopping yet, note to sell. I've clearly spent a lot on Ubers already, and then there's this everything else feature. So you get to customize this, for yourself and basically figure out what categories you want to be able to sort through. So now I'm gonna go back to last month. Let's start with like restaurants. As you can see here are some of the restaurants I ate out in. It doesn't perfectly reflect how much I actually spent eating out because I did put some on my credit card and I did put some on Venmo. So I'm gonna take these different ones and I'm gonna input it line by line into my spreadsheet. So I'll just, I'll see you guys in a second. So there's my total for the month. As you can see, I have some extra lines here. So I'm gonna clean those up. So I was a business major. I had to take so many damn accounting, economics, calculus courses. My brain does not work that way. I couldn't tell you why I was a business major. But one of the few lasting things from good old accounting class, there's this lovely feature that you can do and I'll show you. So you basically press the dollar sign, sum, you throw up a little parentheses and then you get to drag the areas that you want to be all added together. So that helps you see the total amount that I ate out on dinners. So now I'm gonna go do the rest of the categories. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, I'm back. That probably took me about 45 minutes or so to input everything going through mint primarily and then also like I said chase Venmo in my case PayPal as well and it's interesting going through it it's semi what I expected but there are some areas where I'm still like oh I spent a little bit more than I think I quite realized which is why I love doing this method at the end of the month of going through all my finances for example I haven't gone out to like a happy hour in so long but the weather's warm I'm vaccinated things are opening in New York City and going out for like two cocktails really adds up so I'm like there's an area where I could Put back on. And then there's other areas where I'm like, wow, I barely went out for coffee. It's nice to kind of go through all these different sections and kind of see how I did. So a few tips for you. One of them is there's a really incredible app called YNAB. It's not at all realistic to do for a very long time, but even maybe like a week or like two to three weeks, I think would really be helpful in being a lot more intentional with your money. Every time you make a purchase, you input it in there. If you're getting a coffee, if you're buying a pair of shoes online, instead of just easily pressing spend on your phone and like not giving it a second thought, you have to go into the app and manually input it, which I think is a really helpful practice to very much be like, all right, I'm aware that I'm spending this money. I'm being intentional about it. I know where it's going. And I've had a few friends do it and they found it super helpful and kind of like a kick to their system for when it comes to spending money. Another thing too with budgeting is be realistic. If you set yourself up for some like crazy goals where you're like not spending any money, you're setting yourself up for failure and then you're not gonna wanna even try it at all. So I'd say set super realistic goals for yourself. If anything, maybe start off slowly and then kind of wean yourself back little by little. What I love about having a budget too is it basically just helps me really understand where my money's going, how I'm spending it. And then it also allows me to understand like, oh, 
there's my guilt-free spending money because I've already addressed the other money and I know where it's going and I know that I'm paying the things I need to pay. I know I'm saving, I know I'm investing. So now I can spend this other money comfortably and I don't have to think about it. Like that's the best part about making money is to be able to have fun with it in my opinion. All right, I hope this was a helpful budgeting video for you. If you enjoyed it, it would really help me out if you subscribe, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, all the things. It really helps me out with the algorithm. As usual, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.